Uh, and Honorable Farah, yeah. even as I hear you, because you're keen on democratic principles and rights, Article 34 of the Constitution talks of the freedom of the media, that freedom and independence of electronic print and all other types of media is guaranteed, but does not extend to any expression specified in 33.2, which I'll shortly read. Then the state shall not exercise control over or interfere with any person engaged in broadcasting, the production or circulation of any publication or the dissemination of information by any medium or shall not penalize any person for any opinion or view on or the content of any broadcast publication or dissemination and up to that extent i mean when the cs goes ahead to threaten that um, any person who gives business to the nation media group will uh, get fired isn't that going against that it, constitutional it, provision it goes both ways mm -hmm. it gives the media the freedom to take any position they want editorial mm -hmm. policy and everything criticize whatever they want mm -hmm. And, 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 you know, and then it also gives, it gives also the, <laughs> the government also to have its own unfettered position in the manner in which they want to, con it's an administration, by the way. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between the Republic of Kenya and an administration of that time, a regime of that time. Mm -hmm. You see the first amendment in the U.S. as, as, as Onyonka, Onyonka uh, the son of my very good old, one of my mentors, mm -hmm. uh, we were together in the seventh parliament with his father and one of the finest minds I've ever seen in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I, I, have, I have, every time I see him, I remember that <laughs> sage. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I was in a parliament in which the, which side of the, of the divide we are from is, is irrelevant when it comes to good minds. The content was too much. Now the divide is just divide. Now there's no content. There's no content now. There's no content. So let me, let me now tell you. You see, the First Amendment was basically the freedom uh, of you know, government cannot regulate religion. Anybody mm -hmm. can be of any faith, and 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 you know. Also, it, it was it was there was the fear at the initial stage that the anti-federalists, you know, there was a unionist and there was a confederation co co confederalist, yes. right. and, and the fear was that now that the unionists had won, <clears throat> and you know, Lincoln uh, had won that war, the American Civil War itself, that there's going to be a lot of laws. So this more or less stopped Congress from enacting laws that were going to be partisan. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, of course, there was the, <clears throat> the 14th Amendment, which is a due process. Our constitution is elaborate on all that. What it tells you right now is that victimization means you victimize, you arrest people, you take them to court, you create laws that are essentially unconstitutional. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which, of course, the ruling party has the capacity, they have the numbers. They can come up with laws that are punitive against certain areas, and somebody will say the law is the law. But then the constitution now regulates that House of Representatives and in our case, the National Assembly, not to make certain laws. We can't make those laws, they're unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. But as for the conduct of the government, it has, that's the independence of the three arms of the government. When somebody says he's going to go to court, hogwash. We have a problem also in the legal, what they call fraternity. We have all sorts of quacks who basically were failed lawyers who are judges right now who want to try and, you know, what you call legislate from the bench. You can't. You can't legislate from the bench. So parliament, the courts have absolutely no right to get involved in parliament. So for somebody to say that whatever law that's going to be passed in parliament, we're going to go to court to go and contest it, mm -hmm. it's nonsense. You can only do it if that matter is brought before you because somebody has, has, has gone to court against the government for certain legislation itself, which is enacted in government, the enforcement itself, and somebody can say that, that, that cannot be enforced on me because it's unconstitutional. It's only then. But right now, to, to anticipate and to come out and say parliament cannot make this kind of laws, it's, it's nonsense. It's none of their business. Mm -hmm. They don't understand the basic Marbury okay. versus Madison, I, I, which I, essentially, can I, can I just finish? You yeah. know, sometimes it's good to educate Kenyans mm -hmm. on some of these things. And also, educate the ones who are, supposed, who are assumed and believed to be educated. Mm -hmm. They are not that well, well educated in some of these areas. So parliament can enact any piece of legislation. Finance bill, the principal functions of a government is to pass mm -hmm. money bills. You know, Everything Hon else, Hon Hon I want Farah, you to listen to me, you, you know, you, when I'm talking, when yes, I'm saying Yes, you're things. moving faster than the question. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get, we'll get to the point of... Well, you know, we have a prob one problem we have with the media. Yes. As, as somebody is trying to take across a very uh, fundamental issue, uh, the same media guy is only thinking about uh, the next question he's going to ask. No, no. Don't think. That is not what I'm And understand what I'm telling you. No, I, I, okay. I, Honorable Farah, Proceed. <laughs> listen, I was asking you about the conduct of the Cabinet Secretary for Trade and Investment. Now you have gone to the next topic, and you'll get 
No, no, I, uh, that's, I, that is actually, that exactly is what I'm talking. What uh -huh. I'm saying is that the cab the, his dismissal, mm. his recruitment, his deployment, and the money which is going is purely the business of the administration of the day. If the president, in his own wisdom, is convinced that this man is okay, he can do what he's doing right now, there's yeah. nothing in law to stop him from saying that. He has okay. the freedom. The same way the media has the freedom to report and say, castigate the government, the government also has a certain freedom that you cannot take away from them. You can't force them into a straight jacket and say you must, you must what do you call it, advertise with citizen or advertise with nation, or advertise mm -hmm. with... Mm -hmm. They do it the way they want. The same way the Democrats cannot go and advertise with Fox News. Mm -hmm. And the Republicans in the UK and the US cannot go and advertise with CNN. You have to understand that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Let's try and uh, uh, study how democracy has worked. We, ours is a, is a budding, is a budding what they call institution. We're only 60 years independent right now. Mm. And that's always been through crisis. We're trying to find our place in life. Okay. Although we are the best, one of the best in Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa. But still, we have a lot to go. So what I'm trying to say is that if he decides that he's not going to give any business to his citizens, so be it. The next government that will, go, will come will do differently. When Kibaki came in, is when all those big banks you can see, like Equity and God knows Citizen and all of them. When, when, when uh, SK Macharia tried to put up Citizen in those early days under Moi, uh -huh. you know what he went through. Uh -huh. And, okay. and the paper industry, you remember that paper industry and the rest of it. Well, of course, when the change came, he, he got his favorable, favorable, what you call administration, and that administration promoted him very much and promoted a lot of other things, if in the list, through policies. Mm -hmm. That's why some of them have become very big. You get my point? You can't blame uh, uh, Kibaki for having, uh, uh, during his period, for equity to have become the big, uh, it is right now, it's one of the biggest right now in the right. country. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The same way these people have their own policies. If they want to promote a certain uh, areas and, and in the same uh, certain, certain fields, and they have a problem with certain, you know, they have a problem with citizen, they have a problem with nation, they have a problem with that, but they don't have a problem with uh, uh, God knows what, and uh, any other media house, mm -hmm. and, and they feel that their, their ideological persuasion and their political, what they call manifestos, is best articulated by these people who have an editorial policy that's favorable to them, okay. and they promote them. So what's wrong with that? Okay.